Hey GX family, this is Robert with Coastal GX. I'm out here at Truck Toys located in McAllen, Texas, where we're gonna be installing uh, Dobinson's dual swing out bumper on my 2012 Lexus GX460. Sandy really, really needs this rear bumper in the back and it's gonna help out with my spare tire that I have up here. You can see I have the spare tire I've had to put it up on the roof rack and it's a bit of a pain to try to bring it down, you know, if I need to change a tire. So I've been thinking before I get any other mod, maybe the smart thing to do would be to actually, you know, be safe and uh, be able to have that spare tire accessible. Also, it's also going to have a couple of jerry cans on this other side. So that's going to be interesting. They've never installed a Dobinson's uh, dual swing out rear bumper here at Truck Toys. So we're going to be experimenting with Sandy today. I can't wait for this. Okay guys, so Sandy's already in the shop. The guys already started pulling out all the parts from the rear bumper. As you can see, that's the dual jerry can holder, it appears to be. And uh, Angel over here is taking care of the other part. Justin is uh, checking out the instructions way in the back. So the cool thing about this, um, you know, Dobbinson's will provide you, does provide these details and, tr details and uh, instructions on where to cut. It kind of gives you an idea of uh, what to expect, what parts are included. Supposed to, uh, what is it, 22 millimeters? Uh, 440 on this side, 17 and 3 eighths of inches. Okay, yeah, it, it, uh, the one that they have on the... So what we notice, guys, is that the... What they have on... The picture that they have on the instructions is for the 2014 model. This is a 2010 to 2013 model here. And uh, so Justin is measuring it up here. guys just like everything measuring measuring twice measuring three times four times you don't take chances with that so they're really really taking some meticulous care in the measurement of that bumper before they cut before they start uh, doing any uh, modifications that can't be uh, that you can't go back on solid you're going to remo remove the sensors? You're going to remove the sensors? Yeah, I'm going to get all the sensors out and just make sure there's no wiring or anything back there. We're going to get caught up with the grinder. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Nothing crazy happened. <laughs> He's uh, giving me a lot of inspiration over here, man. <laughs> So this thing right here, Justin, I added it afterwards. This is like an aftermarket thing that, that uh, bolts onto this thing right here. So I know that, I don't know how it works with, with the other but we might have to figure that out later or whatever. But I was gonna ask you, does, does this completely come off? You see how it's, does that whole fascia come off and then you cut it out here or? No, I'm gonna cut it on the truck. The while it's there? Uh -huh. Body line's different. Yeah, it's different from the other one. That's why I just went off the base measurement off the bottom of the uh, tail light. 
down, I went with the longest measurement. You know, yeah. Like, should be all right. What I do know is that the one thing that we can concur on is that uh, right there where you have that line right along those sensors, that's where the line appears to be, right? Yes, sir. So that draw tight hitch is an aftermarket ad. I added that one afterwards. Uh, the vehicle did not come with with a hitch, so I had to add that one to it. Yeah. So it looks like right at that body line. Yeah. Yeah, it's higher. In the picture, it's higher, right? Yeah. So I gave it a little bit more, that way we can set the bumper up there and actually see what's what's going on. If we need to take a little bit more off. Maybe. Yeah, it's always better to. Uh, or inside of caution anyway, you can always add to it or subtract. Now, do you have to work with metrics often? Uh, occasionally. Yeah. Well, this is uh, from Australia, so yes, we can expect that. Supposed to be 8.26, 8.25 is eight and a quarter. So if you kind of look at it from there, you're right at it. Oh yeah. That's that's where it's supposed to be. Yes, sir. So right now, what the boys are doing are they're trying to remove the sensors, right? Yes, sir. I'm just moving all the wiring and the sensors and all that stuff out of the way before we start cutting on it. Now we don't tear anything up. So they have like these little clips uh, that attach the frame or something, right? Uh, yeah, they clip into the top of yeah. it. These were the clips. These were the clips that were giving you a hard time over there, huh? Yes. These right here? Yes, sir. It's just super hard to get your hands in the air. Nothing, you know. Yeah. There, you know what I mean? Super tight. Just awkward. Got it all? Yes, sir. <laughs> stop right there. Take the bumper stop. Right. Justin, so that's part of the deal. We need to remove this or or yeah. just, just this little just that little just that main center bracket right there? The that hitch. the main center bracket for the hitch has to be removed? What are these brackets for, Angel? These are for the bumper, to build your bumper. So those go attach to the frame, and then from yeah, there... To the frame, and then from there we bring a bumper, and your bumper's gonna bolt right here. And then we'll go from there. What size is uh, that bolt, brother? 17. 17 millimeter? Yes, sir. But, be but before you put the bracket, you got to make sure the thread inside, it's clean or not, or else you're going to have trouble. It's like, you see, I was trying to put the bracket, but it didn't want to go in there because our thread from inside is dirty. Uh -huh. So what I got to do is I got to re-thread it first. Gotcha. So the bolt can thread in there. If not, you're going to have a hard time messing with the bracket, messing with the bolts. By the time you know, you're going to be bitching and cussing. <laughs> That's the pro tip right there that you were telling me about? Yes, sir. To, re to, to re redo the, the threads inside. Because some of these on the new ones, they come with power coated in the, in, in the inside thread. Uh huh. So sometimes we have a hard time putting them in there. And when you put them in there, sometimes you strip the thread out. So before we do all that, we gotta do, make sure the thread is fine. Get That's all it. that power coating out of there. Another very important tip. On some of these 
you think it's the same thread, but sometimes it's not the same thread. Like right now we're having a hard time. He was having a hard time because like, why does he want to thread there? If you see this, this is a 3.8.8. That's a different size. So that's another thing you got to look for on your threads. Sometimes they look the same, but some of them can be bigger and the other one can be a little bit smaller thread. So that's another thing you got to look for. Be Pay close attention. Yes. yes. If you don't pay attention, what you're going to do is you're going to screw up the thread inside. So you're going to have to go spend a little bit more time and do an, a thread that will fit the size of your bolt thread. You need to uh, cut that foam part to make more space? Yes. The reason we got to get rid of this foam insulation bumper thing, we were going to install the bumper, but what we saw is that if we install the bumper, it's not going to let it sit. So these bumpers things got to come off. The insulation needs to be needs to come off because if you try to put your bumper, it's not going to let it sit. Maybe it will, but once you it goes up, when you're going to try to open your tailgate, it's gonna be scraping so yeah. i don't think the customer would like to for the tailgate to be scraping so in order for the bumper to fit sit here well these gotta come off yeah yeah between the middle and then this bolt goes in the front go a little bit Same thing, we're gonna do the same bracket, the same installation on the driver's side. Careful. Angel, so at this point you're removing the sensors? Yes, sir. You gotta remove the sensor and then you gotta install them in your other bumper. But on these, you just gotta be real careful because if you break one, things are expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure we mark them where you remove them so you can put them back on the other bumper. Is that the way you're doing it? You're going ahead marking, yes, sir. marking whatever belongs? It. Yes, sir. Just make sure you put it back in order. Another pro tip would have been uh, maybe in the future, like to paint, get them painted, yeah, right? Get them painted. Angel, what part is this one, brother? This is a uh, bumper bracket, the rear bumper bracket. It's to hold your bumper against the frame. Vergas. <laughs> yeah. Like a little notch. Yeah, how big is the piece that slides over that? So uh, that's what I'm worried about is it locking in. Maybe. Yeah. And this thing won't go further that way either, right? No, this is the way it's supposed to be. It looks like it.
Gonna have to remove it? Yeah, because I want to clean that up. I don't want that to look so. As, as with anything that's brand new, man, or you know, a new install, sometimes, you know, especially when the instructions don't provide you with yeah. every single little detail, shits like this is gonna happen, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. It's real common with stuff like this, especially trying to make stuff work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you readjust, and sometimes you have to adapt. And yeah, that's why I'd rather pull it back off, make sure the cuts look clean and everything's pretty, and you know what I mean. I don't like stuff to look half-assed. Okay guys, so I was talking to Justin and with the install, what you get is what you get is what you get, right? So there's different variants of vehicles that come off from the Land Cruiser Prado 150. Obviously, this is a 2010 to 2013 look for a Lexus GX460. It's gonna have different panels, it's gonna have different lights in the back, different from the 2014 to the later model GX 460s. So we made a cut, he made a cut, you know, that was gonna fit the newer model, but of course we didn't have those instructions for a 2012 model. So once we were checking it out, we saw that the spindles, I guess where the little arms go, that it was, um, it was, it was kind of touching with that, you know, the, the plastic part right there of the bumper. So. Gonna have, the only way to do it is to remove it, remove it completely and go ahead and cut it correctly as, as uh, Justin explained uh, in order to get it perfect. And check it out guys, other things that they do not tell you, and this is something for the manufacturers, they sell you these, uh, they sell you these bumpers and they say, hey man, it's good for this, but you know, what we found out, like Angel over here has had to make modifications to the sensor holes in order to fit the existing sensors from uh, Sandy over here. So this is something, I, I, I guess this is why it's a good thing to do these type of videos because you learn little things and uh, hopefully we can share with you guys and you guys can learn from, uh, you guys can learn from our experience over here, what we're going through with this installation, so that you don't, maybe you guys can uh, get a little more help with that and maybe it'll help you guys out. Anyway, if you guys have ever installed one of these, please go ahead and comment below and let me know what suggestions you guys have. Maybe you can help someone else that's going through this as well, so. As you guys can see, uh, Angel's putting the last of the sensors now. He already took care of the others. These are several sensors that it comes with. And apparently uh, Dobinson's has improved their LED lights. These are supposed to be light, uh, brighter LEDs that they have here. So that's gonna be interesting to see how they light up. As you all saw, Justin made that adjustment when he cut into that, but we hadn't, once again, it's not in the instructions, it's nowhere in there. So you see this little locking pin right here? This is creating pressure. It's creating pressure on this fender right here and it's causing it to bow out like this. <laughs> That's the little son of a bitch that we were counting on. <laughs> Here what we're trying to do is we're connecting the sensors back again to the way they were, but it's a little bit difficult to get to the sensors, so you just gotta work through it so we can get to them. But we'll get it, we'll get it.
middle. At this point, what, what is it that you're uh, you're looking for there, Justin? Uh, just look, hooking up the brake light, the turn signal on the bumper. Okay. Not very cooperative sometimes. Yeah. Hit the brake. All right. I know. I know what you're trying to do. And that's attention to detail, bro. You're trying to level it. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Shit, yeah, bro. That is that. Hell yeah. That up. Okay, my friends very next day we're going to continue the completion of the build at my house because we ran out of time yesterday so i'm going to try to do this myself maybe i shouldn't be doing this but i'm going to give it a try okay uh instead of waiting right now what i need to do there's a couple of things that are missing one of them is going to be the light okay the light that lights up the license plate the license plate is going to be relocated right over here in this spot right here and uh, so this thing has to be attached here in order to do that I'm gonna to have to find power off the little uh, lights right here the the lights that uh, light up the license plate and I also need to find a way figure out a way of relocating that reverse camera probably place it somewhere around here I don't know how I'm gonna do it but you know I'm gonna to try to figure it out big thanks to a youtuber uh, up-and-coming good guy GX Bob I'll go ahead and leave a link to his video where he can uh, he can show you how to remove the panel of uh, the door the, the rear door that is going to give you access to the camera okay I'm not gonna take credit for that because he's the one that uh, showed everybody so kudos to him thank you very much GX Bob Okay, guys, just follow GX Bob's recommendations. I'm going to get started on this thing. From in here, use your 10 millimeter. Next, you're going to take a flathead. And there's a little tab here. You remove it so you have access to a Phillips following his instructions. Back at this one. Okay guys, so as you can see, there is nothing major to it. It's just, you know, being able to identify where some of these snapping points are gonna be so that you don't break anything. Everything comes out smooth. Again, huge thanks to that guy, Tokayo GX Bob. Okay guys, so we removed that last panel and as you can see, you know, now we have this thing right here, the film that goes and covers some of the electronics some of the wires that are back here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to gently peel this off man this is a, a gooey mess here so i made some space here and let me get the camera here but 
really what I'm trying to access. What I'm trying to access is uh, this camera right here. And I'm going to try to get some power, grab some power from the license plate lights on the other side and maybe run them through here and kind of keep all of these um, wires together. I'm going to try to figure that out. Probably going to consult with my friend Gabriel to see how I can do this most efficiently. But uh, I will tell you this, I am nervous, man. Doing stuff like this always makes me nervous. As I'm trying to run power to uh, the license plate light, I guess where it's gonna be repositioned on this uh, jerry can swing out arm over here. And I'm also trying to send the reverse camera over on this side instead of the center of the spare. For my applications, because I use a trasheroo and I'm gonna use a, 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 a spare cover on the spare tire, I cannot place it in the center or I refuse to put it there. I just want to put it somewhere else, but I really want that reverse camera. I really like that feature. I think it uh, really does help out. So I want to retain that. So uh, what I'm thinking of doing is, you know, go ahead and moving this camera right here, moving it over, like I said, over to the other side and uh, trying to figure out, you know, how to get power from the license plates okay well that pops this thing out I don't know if I should just keep it here or if I'm supposed to remove it from there. Okay guys, so now that I went ahead and I removed the camera from the inside of the panel, now uh, remember I need to tap into those uh, license plate lights and in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to remove this. I already started, there's like a Phillips screw there. So I'm gonna start removing that little lens and see if I can expose the wire and um, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can tap into one of those wires uh, and uh, see if I can join that wire or those wires up with the camera wire and then run that through the grommet. I'll explain, I'll explain a little bit later. Oh my God, man. Okay, guys, so big, big lesson. Don't mess around. You know, you got to understand what the gauges are going to be. You know, I'm using, this is an 18 gauge right here. This is 18 to 22, and this is something a lot smaller. So it didn't, it didn't work there. Thank goodness that Nacho was here. And uh, that's 18 to 14. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was 18 to 14. And uh, this is 18 to, 18 to 22 right here. So. Oh my God, and these are precious. Don't screw it up, Robert. Okay guys, so we finally got power from the license plate uh, light and uh, we already tested it out. It's working fine. Now we're gonna see if we can cut right here, uh, cut the reverse uh, camera and maybe run those four wires and hook them up with along with this one as well, which is the license plate power. Hey guys, so day three of the build. It's just been one thing after another. So, you know, on day one, what we were able to do is we were able to have uh, Justin and his team over here at Truck Toys install the, they were able to install the bumper. We were supposed to install, or we were supposed to relocate the camera and we were supposed to relocate the license plate light over to the bumper the very next day. Unfortunately, Justin wasn't feeling well and uh, he, he wasn't able to install it. I, however, I was foolish enough to think that I was able to do it myself. So I was ill prepared. I got started at 730 at night. I'm going to throw you a bunch of uh, excuses at you guys, but 
yeah, I failed miserably. I really, really tried to install it myself. I only kind of half-assed it and uh, I was able to do as much as I could. But now it's day three. I brought it back. Justin is feeling a little bit better. And he said, hey man, just bring the truck over. Let's get uh, to work on it. So we're gonna try to see if we can maybe put that bow on top and wrap the project up today, I hope. Now the reason why Angel is putting it in that part of the jerry can holder is because the way we're thinking is it's probably best just to keep that camera as centered as possible and uh you know so that's what we're thinking we're thinking that's probably the the best thing to do there so here's a little uh, pro tip from uh my friend gabriel where well, you're going to be running the wires over this way and you have to snake them through here he suggested to release both of these sides, this little boot right here, in order to take it in here, to be able to release it from both sides in order to make the, the snaking a little easier. Hey, what's up, Gabe? How you doing? Pretty good, how about you? All right, man, all right. Hey, I'm over here at uh, Truck Toys. Let me flip this on, flip this on you here. But uh, can you hear, I don't know if you can hear me, but check this out. So, this is the boot right here that you were talking about but is that gonna go in like how far in is it just this panel right here yeah I want to say thanks man to uh, my buddy from El Paso Gabriel he already went through this nightmare say hello to Gabriel <laughs> I see that you have a different cable there that you're using. Is that more for a? For the camera. That's a that's a that's a special one for the camera. Yeah. So Valentin says that the cable that they're using right here, it didn't come with a kit, the kit that I have, but he's using this other one that they that the shop is providing, and that's what they're going to use to tap into the video camera, the reverse camera. Little pro tip.
Angel, you've done several of these setups right here? Yes, sir. And is this, is there anything different to this particular one from um, any of Mostly everything's color matching. Sometimes one wire freaks you out, but you, normally what I do is like I try them out first and spread them around so they won't make false contact. Because sometimes either you can f up the camera or you can burn the fuse. Okay. But the first time, what I do is like I try them out first and then we'll go from there. Gotcha. I do them on Toyotas, Toyota Tacoma, the Tundras and all of the truck vehicles. So here's something interesting guys remember that this this bumper right here this setup is straight from australia okay yes it went through treaty oak in houston but it was imported from australia so what does that mean angel just found out right now he had to modify the license plate because the license plate bracket over here is designed for an australian license plate not really one from texas apparently but hey he made it work. Tell me, Justin, you've installed several, you know, aftermarket bumpers similar to this. Mm -hmm. Is this your first Dobinsons? Yeah, it's the first Dobinsons on a Lexus, especially. The uh, mainly do like the C4 Fab stuff on the uh, Forerunners and uh, side steps and stuff like that on the Forerunners. This is really the most in depth we've gotten into a Lexus before. What do you think, what was your opinion, man, installing this one over here? Uh, was, were the instructions enough for you? Or I know that there were some, you had to innovate. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's real, that's a common thing, man, especially with stuff like this that's not made specifically for this year model or, you know what I mean, stuff like that. But like having to take it back off and recut a couple extra little spots and trim stuff, that's real common stuff we have to do. If people are gonna be, uh, you know, going this way, and modifying their vehicle, this is something that's expected. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, 80% of the stuff we do here is like that. You know what I mean? Because a lot of the stuff we do is not just direct bolt-on stuff. A lot of it is custom fab work and having to make brackets and readjust for other stuff that can be in the way or whatever, you know? Having said that, I mean, people have to be honest with themselves. When it comes down to installing something as serious as this it could be a nightmare or you could even get injured you have two choices you could do it yourself mm -hmm. or you can go to a reputable shop like truck toys yes sir what is what is it what's in your what's your opinion on, on something like that i mean it's really at the customer's discretion you know what i mean whatever you feel comfortable with doing you know we do the same thing here if there's stuff that i don't feel comfortable with then I don't do it. I recommend it to somebody else that, that I've known for a long time that I trust doing that type of work. You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's the main thing, man. I, I do the same stuff. There's stuff that I'm uncomfortable with doing, and I'll call one of my buddies or one of my other friends that, that owns another shop that's, that does that more often than I do. You, I've seen, just in the last three days that I've been here with you, I've seen a lot of overlanding type of rigs coming mm -hmm. around, truck toys seems like uh, it's gaining popularity it's getting yeah. more intense yes sir yeah there's we've been doing quite a few of them actually lately in the past eight months or so We've had a lot more a couple years ago we never saw stuff like this you know what i mean nobody was doing it really um truck toys is uh the truck toys the, the right place to be obviously i mean there's testimony oh right yeah here. we'll do it man i mean pretty much whatever i'm I'll give it a shot, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs>have it that's my humble video on the dobinson's 4x4 dual swing out bumper and the repositioning of the reverse camera there are so many steps when it comes to installing the equipment and it's difficult to document every single detail however i truly hope this video can give you a better idea and perhaps you can make up your mind using this information
I can say that I'm pleased as can be. This is one modification I was looking forward to. The materials appear to be very high quality and there are no weird rattles or issues with the lights. I want to give a huge thanks to Justin James from Truck Toys and his awesome crew. I sincerely endorse this shop and recommend them to anyone who may be in need of similar services. Special thanks to my buddy Gabriel and Jorge for their help, advice, and motivation. Be safe and get up, get out, do something.